Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Different Spoil YouTube channel. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day like your girl and if not, you better be manifesting, planning and preparing for a better one because it's surely coming to you all for sure. Alright you guys, so today is Wednesday hump day. Let's get it you guys. So y'all know what Wednesdays are on my YouTube uh, channel. I bring you uh, uh, for Wednesday's content. It is the podcast and so uh, I'm excited because I'm going to be dropping or sharing with you all my podcast interview that I did with the lovely Keisha Woods of uh, the Empowering Power Talk, um, excuse me, the Empowering Real Talk podcast show. I want to make sure I say that correctly and put some respect on her uh, name and, and, and what it is that she's doing in the podcast world. So big shout out to uh, Keisha for having me. I uh, appeared as a guest on her show back in June of this year. Uh, we talked about uh, Juneteenth, my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Uh, let's see, bringing social awareness to society, uh, being a woman in business, uh, let's see, as well as uh, mental health awareness and awareness. And so without further ado, you guys, I want to go ahead and let's get into it. Let's check it out and I'll come back on um, and once it's done and then I'll let you guys know what's going on elsewhere or else more <laughs> in different world. Yeah. So here it is. Check it out. Hello, welcome back to the Empowering Real Talk Podcast. It's your girl, Coach K. Woods with Upgraded Mindsets, back with another dope session. Y'all know I am not going to spend a long time in introductions, but I have a guest with me today, and I am all about this girl's vibe. I appreciate her being on the podcast today, so I'm going to get right to it. Let me introduce Miss Different of Third Eye Entertainment. How are you doing? I'm very good, love. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Shout out to everybody listening. Uh, yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-N-R-T. <laughs> um, I'm an author, motivational speaker, and a CEO of my own business, like Ms. K said, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC, a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services, in which educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. So I'm very excited and happy to be on the show talking here with my girl about my new product, my book, as well as, you know, my life journey and, you know, helping others and talking with them about my testimony and getting my mental health in check. Absolutely, baby. I love it. Like, I, I, this is something that y'all know that I love. I am big on alignment and I love the fact that, you know, I am, you know, talking with people and networking with people and getting a chance to talk to people that, you know, share in some like-mindedness as far as, you know, empowering and encouraging and elevating us. Cause I am super big on that. Mm -hmm. Um, that's my purpose. You know, um, I am a full time at this, you know, so it is something that I strive for daily, you know, so, so to read, you know, a little about you, um, I was like, Hey, that's that, right. That's that alignment. I love it. Um, yeah. I love it. So, you know, just kind of dig into a little bit about you. Um, okay. so let the listeners know a little bit about you. Yeah, of course. So, uh, I guess give it a little bit of background about myself. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm 31 years old. I said some things about myself, but I guess as far as my hobby goes, uh, I'm basically a daredevil type of personality. I love to travel been all over the world. Um, I love ATVing, bike riding, I love chakra healing, doing yoga, meditation, reading, riding, um, horseback riding. Um, before the pandemic and I gained all this weight, I used to do MMA. <laughs> Girl. But um, I know. I'm you know, um, what I've been doing now that I, I focus more so on my energy is just uh, building my brand and creating, you know, generational wealth for myself and family. And so that's right now where my hobby is, here, here go, um, why I have this new book and this business out and how it came to be. Um, just like I said, getting my mental health in check led me to writing a book and starting my own business. And so me sharing my testimony today with you, I know that it's going to help somebody down the road. Maybe not even right now listening to it, but sometime down the road, you're going to hear my story and think, wow, that's me. I can, what she did it, I can do it. That's so, hard. Um, Reach one, two, two, three. Yeah. As far as, you know, my background coming up in Houston, we can say that I had a pretty good upbringing up until the time I was 11 years old. And I, me and my family ended up homeless on the street uh, for the next three years. We literally lived from pillow to pillow, sleeping in, you know, crack houses, shelters, uh, 
I want one of them Miss called me on that. We stayed, we slept in the craft house for like maybe a week or a person. Right, right. Hey, hey, the experience happened. So, don't downplay You know, we, we, we did that for three years until I was around the age of 14, and a family member secretly placed me in foster care um, for about the first six months of me being in the system. None of my family members knew where I was. And I tried my hardest to come home. However, I found out from a former, another foster kid that if he stayed out, excuse me, aged out uh, in the state of Texas, they pay for your full tuition to college. And so right there, you know, a street book went out, street like <laughs> street smarts to elevate my book smarts. And that's just what I did. So I spent the next four years in foster care. And when I aged out and graduated from Elsick High School, I ended up going uh, with a full ride to San Houston State University. And by the grace of God, that was another blessing in disguise because when I got there, um, so many good things came out of it. Before I graduated, I started my own student organization titled Paid For It, which we educated, volunteered, and mentored to the youth around the area, especially in kids where they were in foster care. Um, that's actually where my motivational speaking book was planted. We would go to different high schools and speaking with them about the importance of education. And so oftentimes when I would share my testimony, the kids afterwards would come up and tell me, hey, I'm going through the same thing. Well, I'm in care too. Well, I didn't know, you know, CPS does that for us foster kids. So uh, that right there led me to starting, you know, speaking and motivating people. I also, I was blessed with the opportunity to travel abroad. Uh, I think it was my senior semester, junior semester, I got to go to uh, South Korea, Kim Young University, and that sparked my travel bug. I, while I was over there, I ended up going to eight other different countries in Europe and China and Japan and wow. now to just about 50 countries up until the pandemic happened. <laughs> so oh uh, graduating, you know, that was a big accomplishment in itself. I graduated with my degree in international business have two minors in economics and business comm, as well as a uh, few years later, got my master's degree in entrepreneurship. I'm also a Texas real estate agent, as well as a newly licensed insurance agent. I just passed my exam a couple of weeks ago. Oh, sick! I don't play no games, Kay. Hey, you know, I love it, girl. All of that being said, all those accomplishments under my belt and those, those notches and stuff, it didn't mean, you know, a damn thing to me if I still, I was still battling demons. I had a lot of things that was plaguing me from my past and from my childhood that right. carried over through my high school years, throughout my college, and even as a young adult to where I would let it, you know, started to affect all the career opportunities that came my way. There was one opportunity that I had um, that I think about and regret to this day, and I should be over it, but I'm not. Uh, had a meeting with a person who was just well connected and basically sort of took me from the back to the front. However, you know, I let those voices in the back of my head that we all deal with, I let my get in my demons, you know, get to me and you know tell me, you know, hey, you're not good enough. They're not they're not like you. They don't like you like that. They're just taking pity on you because you were a foster kid or you know, you're too country, you too ghetto, you talk too fast, those things. And so I ended up showing up late to that meeting. And it left a sour taste in that person's mouth. And you know, they didn't want to work with me afterwards. And it just, from that day forward, I had regretted it. And it's going on over 10 years now. But that being said, fast forward to, and other, you know, issues like that, similar, you know, that baggage I lived with it and relived it over and over until one day I had to wake up and face the ugly truth and look at myself in the mirror and say, hey, whatever I went through as a child, it may or may not have been my fault. It was out of my control, but as an adult, it's on me to deal with. It's my problem to go with it, okay? And so with that being said, I dismissed that notion that, you know, us black people don't do therapy, and it's a black girl went to the ass to therapy. Oh, oh, that's right. So, doing so, you know, I say this to anybody out there, therapy saved my life. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm still going strong with it now. I haven't been as consistent with that, that advice that I've been, but I'm still active in it. Uh -huh. And I just want to take a side note and say for anybody out there that's feeling, you know, depression, anxiety, any type of mental anguish or feeling suicidal or know somebody that is, just know that it is okay to not be okay, but do not sit there and not be okay. Go get exactly. help, go talk with somebody, go pick up a hobby, go mend those broken bridges, go cut those people off that mean you know well, go do whatever it is that you have to do to free yourself from that mental bondage and do what you have to do to fulfill your destiny. 
Uh, I'll be honest with you, right, even right now, as I'm talking with you, I'm very depressed. I've actually been diagnosed with chronic and manic depression um, as of last year. I had to deal with five deaths back to back to back, but the one me out was my mother. She died in my arms the day after Christmas, oh. and I'm dealing with that even as we speak because it's the first time, for the first year around for it, and, you know, her birthday is about to come up in October. My anxiety levels are through the roof. It takes everything in me not to go off that deep end or try to take somebody with me. So for me, it's important to, you know, have a plan of action and grieve in a healthy manner and talking about it with people who don't know me like you and sharing my story. Crazy as it seems, it gives me comfort because it reminds me and, and, and assures me that I'm not alone and that I'm not the only person going through this type of situation. So if I can offer any type of words of encouragement to them or have my testimony, you know, sharing it with them to help them cope with whatever they're going through, then that's why I do it. Normally I'm a private person, but now as I've gotten older and realized, you know, I have a purpose in life that I have to feel and I shouldn't and I, and I can't keep all of my gifts and talents that God has blessed me with hidden and kept to myself. It's meant for me to share it with the world and now it's time. And so in doing so, talking with my therapist, he encouraged me to get back into one of my hobbies, which was writing and journaling. And so, like I said, being stuck in the house for the pandemic, uh, had nothing to do. And, and, and boom, May 25th, 2020 happens, the day George Floyd died. Uh, we're both from Houston. He's from Third Ward, I'm from Fifth Ward. The neighborhoods are right next to each other. So when the protest for George Floyd was going on, I wanted to get involved. I wanted to have my voice being heard. However, I felt that I wanted my voice to be heard long after this protest is over. I wanted my voice to be heard long after I'm gone, you know? And so I asked God, going home and talking with him, asking him, what is it that I can do, you know, that's gonna make people think, you know, about what's going on. It's gonna, you know, put me on the map and take me from the back to the front. And this is what he showed me, you know, little by little, piece by piece. You know, I, he would show me little images and, and I would ask questions, you know, what if this this was the situation was on the other, the shoe was on the other foot. So little by little, um, and then started, I started writing this in the summer of June 2020. And by December 2020, once I was done uh, with the manuscript of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, I took it to my lawyer and let her read it and she gave it high praises. Uh, and she hit me with that question that rocked my world, and she was like, well, what's the name of your business? And I'm like, uh, I kept telling her my book, the title right. of my book. She was like, no, I don't think you understand. She's like, if you're going to sell a product to the public, you have to have an LLC in order to do so because there's sales taxes involved. And so that's one thing about life, Coach K, you know, when you think you know it all, and I never claim to do, but, you know, it just reminds you, you know, you think you got a hold of it and life comes through and knock you off your high horse and reminds you you don't know a damn thing and so just know you know <laughs> to, you know, it's too old to start learning no matter how many degrees you got under your belt it's always something new or more to be learned right. i had now running learning how to run an llc and what's do's and don't i'm still learning yeah. but march 2021 third eye entertainment llc was formed and I got the name Third Eye Entertainment or Third Eye because for one, like I said, I'm a person that's really big into chakras and making sure that my third eye chakra is always clear and open. Um, I always often say when your heart and your mind is in tune with one another, you're able to see what it is in front of you with the spirit of discernment. It will show you what's for you. And you're able to make those decisions a lot more clearer and better for yourself. So when your heart and, heart and your mind is in tune with one, you will have a better view of your own third eye and you can manifest or go after what you have, your destiny, better than, than when you didn't. So that's why I called mine the third eye entertainment LLC. And so that's how we're here. <laughs> oh, girl. When I tell you, I got poops from space. <laughs> oh, my God. That was so, so, so dope. Like, let me just say this to you. Thank you so much for bringing mm -hmm. that to my platform mm -hmm. because when i tell you i felt every word of what you said you told your story sis you told yeah. your story like and you told it so amazing like i'm proud of you i, I just gotta say it. i'm proud <laughs> of 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it's just, you know, as a woman, I understand how hard it is for us to mm-hmm. even think on things like that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Um, I've suppressed so many things over the years. I'm really just now realizing how much I really suppressed over the years. Um, things that I did not remember from years ago, I am now remembering. And it's like, oh my God. Like, but that's because my mind is becoming more clear. You know, um, and it's like, wow, you know, I had to really allow myself to submit to that because before I, I suppressed it so much that if something tried to come out, it's like, no, 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 no. You know, let me put the, the shield on, you know, I don't, I don't want those emotions to come out. So to like hear your passion and like the drive behind you, like, I think that is so dope. Like so, I'm talking about people. These are the real success stories out here. For one, mm-hmm. identifying your mental health and not suppressing that, and getting help for that. You know, because you knew that there mm-hmm. had to be some type of plan of action for you in order for you to grow and do what it is that you want to do, and that's elevate and empower other people. Well, don't give me all the credit. First and foremost, I got to stop it right there and let it be known that it, I am nothing without God. Oh, you know, oh, let's, leave, let's be clear. Now, I understand that, baby. And get me there, man, because without him, even in his time of grieving the loss of my mother, yeah. it's been truly too hard. And it's, it's without him and my nephew, I don't know where I'd be, as, as well as with this, my, my business and my book. Um, I've committed myself to this. I've always committed it to it, but I'm really, right. really into it now <laughs> that my mother is, you know, no longer with yeah. me. She's my best friend, you know, my number one. Oh. And I would, I've never been that type of person that's uh, have many friends. I've always been to myself. And so it's just been very, very hard yeah. trying to get out there and be active, but being that person that's always been so aloof. I'm not antisocial, but right. I am that one that just likes to mind my own, you know, less problems you have to deal with when you're around less people so to speak but now that you know she's no longer here i have no choice but to you know find a new normal and a new plan of action a healthy plan of action that's going to keep me from going off the deep end that's you know one thing about death or the death of a loved one is that um as soon as my mother died that 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 devil was real man he came upon me with that urge to drink and i don't drink i've never really indulged in drinking like that before but, you know, soon as my mom passed, there was that thought to, you know, go get tossed and hit the sauce and go get tossed. Yeah. But I, I I haven't yet, and thank God, because for one, I don't like drinking. It's just, it don't fit well with me. Right, but right. I see how when people are going through these type of mental anguish, how they resort to, you know, drugs, sex, and alcohol, because they just need something to numb that pain. I don't drink, I don't know much about liquor and what type of spirits or what. All I know is liquor numbs the pain. And so for me, and I live right up the street or right across the street from a liquor store. So it takes everything in me not to go over there and just, you know, drown my pain in a bottle of liquor. But so in order to not do that, I have to find a different alternative. And that's meditating, you know, keeping my mental sick, even when it comes to it. If it's just a little bike ride or going for a walk or, you know, doing something in her memory. I, I actually have a YouTube channel that I also do, and um, I post my travel blogs and social awareness blogs there. So I just recently did a Mother's Day video dedicated to my mother, and it, it helps me coping, helps me with the coping. You know, when I'm missing her, I just go watch that video when I can, and you know, hearing her voice, it, it helps. But um, I, I, it's, that pain will never go away. You just have to learn how to get used to it, and that's where I'm with it. And I know I'm not the only one going through it out there and so again for anybody out there that's listening uh just know again it's okay to not be okay but just don't sit there and not be okay if you need to or if you know anybody out there that is feeling suicidal please give them this number 1-800-273 excuse me yeah 273-8255 that's a u.s uh, crisis hotline for those who may need it or they can go online to mentalhealthishealth.us if they are outside the U.S., there's a website that you can go to called encounseling.com. It is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G, encounseling.com. Or you can text 741-741 if you're in the U.S. I always try to give those resources and educate anybody that may need it uh, for 
for, for their, to help keep their mental health in check because it, it helps keep mine. But also remember to do your own research and your own homework and find what works for you when it comes to keeping your mental health in check and, and on the right track, if you will. Absolutely. Um, and yes, I will definitely um, make sure that that information is posted in the podcast information details. Um, mm-hmm. So that will be easily available um, for anyone to access because you are absolutely right. Um, those resources are something that we don't see enough of. Mm-hmm. Um, so us doing our due diligence and putting it out there, we never know who it could help. You know, a, as long as one person hears this, as long as one person reaches this, you know, I, I, that's a success in my eyes because that one person could be the person that is exactly. attending for it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So um, I am totally, you know, totally with that. Um, it's, it, it is important. Um, you know, you said something that made a lot of sense. Um, we never get over the pain of loss. We just learn how to cope better. Yeah, just get used to the new normal. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's one thing that, you know, a lot, I had to understand, um, you know, I, ha- I still have my mother, uh, but my mother didn't raise me. Um, you know, I, my grandmother raised me. My mom was, you know, in the streets. I was born in the federal penitentiary. So, you know, um, although we are close now, you know, but that took years yeah. of us building a relationship. But, you know, my grandmother passed at 21 and I was devastated. Yeah. You know? um, it was a heartbreak for me. And then, I, my sister got sick in 2007, so I took care of her along with my two nephews. Um, mm-hmm. And she passed in, uh, yesterday, actually made um, 14 years. Wow. 14 years. My condolences for that. Man, um, we all going through it out here. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's, you know, so, and you know. You never know what somebody's going through, man. And you don't, you know, and that's why I tell people all day, you know, I, I, I kept going even though I had years of suppressed trauma, I had to now become a mother of one to a mother of three, you know, and I kept pushing, you know, so just hearing, you know, your story, you know, although it's not the same story, I feel Mm -hmm. like your, you know, the pain in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Like, because it comes out so passionately and, but I, I, again, I will tell you that I am proud you know, um, one thing that I definitely make sure I do is I definitely make sure that we celebrate ourselves on this platform. Mm-hmm. Yes, we have support. Yes, God is there for us every step of the way. But at the end of the day, baby girl, your intentions is what's keeping you going. Your intentions of wanting to better yourself for generational wealth for you. You know what I'm saying? To create your legacy. That is your intention. And I want you to stand proud in that intention. You know what I'm saying? Because that is you, boo. That is you. That is mama in you. That is mama helping you still, you know, and you doing it for mama. So I want you to be proud of that. It don't dim your shine for nothing, baby. Nothing. You're right. You're right. I ain't, nothing. man. It's, 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 it's going to get better. It's, it's hard for me right now. And I, I try to keep it. What you see is what you get with me. Absolutely. I I know, I'm the only one going through it. It's hard right now. I, I When I go home at night, I don't mind wanting to dark places. So that's why for me, it's just important, even if it means getting on social media and just talking to people and leaving comments just to start conversations, mm-hmm. it, it helps, man. Even, you know, yeah. with this book and promoting it, the, you know, talking about that, uh, I thank God my mother was able to see me, you know, with another accomplishment, you know, yes. out there. I just hate that, you know, for the big break that's about to come, she's not here physically, but I yeah. know she's here. And, and she and, is, and she gonna be in you forever. Okay. Yeah, I look just like her, so. <laughs> <laughs> I look just like her, but um, I, I want you know, it, it's not just about trial. Let's let's no, turn it into a triumph and how my my yeah, trial relationship is a triumph. You know, like, like with this book where I have what if a controversial paradigm shift. Um, yeah, let's talk about but, that a little bit. Yeah. So, like I said, this book was was inspired, you know, by being stuck in the house and the death of George Floyd and wanting to get involved and, and finally speaking on the issue for so long, I was quiet about it because I didn't really understand. I couldn't grasp the concept of, is this really what the world we're living in? But then after we've seen so many of these, you know, definitely young, innocent, not just black people, but, you know, people that are unarmed and, and these trigger happy police officers out here, you know, after a while, you realize, man, this is really real. This is what we're up against. My nine-year-old at the time, nephew, who 
who's on the spectrum, you know, but is is just happy as he can be, yeah. is a, a young black boy coming up in America. Now we have to prepare him how to, you know, carry himself when he comes around the police. And now we're teaching him about wearing hoodies and sagging and stuff and, and why he shouldn't. It sucks that we have to now mold our black men into and condition them how to be good little boys for when they grow up to not to look like a bad man automatically. It sucks, but that's the truth that we're looking at now. And with this book, the way that I have set it up and the reason why I've set it up in this file, the title of the book is called What If a Controversial Paradigm Sheep and Emphasis on the Controversial because you know, within I've noticed in society they like to turn a blind eye to things that are real and need to be addressed. And but however, they will run for controversy in a second. And so the, the attention grabber of this book, the way that I get the attention of the audience is by, you know, the controversial route. And so with what if a controversial paradigm shift is a book that is written to inform and encourage thought proposing conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And it's done through graphic and provocative illustrations. And so um, in this detail with the four main paradigms, uh, excuse me, categorized paradigm shift, we have historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical paradigm shift. And with these paradigms, I'm asking sub questions uh, with respect to that paradigm and, and it asks basically a racial reversal question, you know, what if? So, for instance, with hypothetical, excuse me, historical paradigm, one of the first uh, questions I ask with the illustration is, what if in 1619 Africans started dealing in illegal slave trade and were as they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children and brought them on slave ships in America? And then you will see the provocative and thought provoking illustration of a slave ship with black slave owners having shackles on white slaves. And you know, it, and we see white slaves jumping from the ship. And so, it's, the, it's that question that gets you stirred in thoughtful conversations about it. And so the way that, again, that I have set the book up is if the questions don't get you, the illustrations definitely will. I also must say that this book does come with a disclaimer. It's intended for a mature audience only. Um, no doubt about it, it will ruffle some feathers and piss people, some people off, but it, it, once the bell is being right. ringing, I ring the bell. Right. But the point of the book is to get the conversation started, so whether it be good or bad, they're talking about it. Um, Empowering uh, real talk, folks. <laughs> <laughs> right? I also want to state that, you know, for those who read this book and they, they try to take it to where um, they say that this book is like a tool for Black people to uprise against Black white folks, or the white community. No, it's not. So please stop that. What it is is a book that's strictly, it's nothing in the book that I'm telling you is a lie. These are all true, actual, factual, death, controversial events that have occurred in America within the African American community. They're all true. The only difference is, it's a race role reversal. Now it's happening to white folks instead of black folks in the book. And so when you see these illustrations and it makes you, you know, quiver or it makes you cringe, and then want to ask that question, well, why did you put this book out? Why, why, what if, why did you guys get over this? You know, that's how this conversation and my, my theory, my hope is that it'll get the conversation rolling. Now, whether it goes nowhere fast, that's a different story. The point is, is to, to, to put something out there to where you can say, at least I tried. Nothing needs to fail you for the try. And, yeah. you, know, what, you know, Coach K, what if this is our generation, this is the generation that, you know, plants the seed for the next or the next generation, you know? I'm well aware that change doesn't happen overnight right. and it doesn't happen with just one person. But what if we have a generation that starts it? Just by talking about it, just by right. accountability and putting it in their faces whenever they try to act as though it was not that big of a deal and, you know, thinking, giving us, you know, finally Juneteenth, the federal holiday is gonna make up for all the oppression. Oh, girl. It's a start, but no, it's not, <laughs> you know, and so things like that, and when we keep pushing the envelope, we're pushing it, and they're putting it in their faces, that is where, you know, over time, I, in my opinion, see the change, you know, I used to work with the U.S. Census before the pandemic, and I noticed when I would go around taking the surveys and talking to people, a lot of things that people complain about commonly over time that got, you know, the, the, the attention of the Congress and the lawmakers. And so 
when we come together and you know as one and start making our voices heard as one then over time that's when we can see some change i for one am tired of talking about systemic racism i'm ready to talk about systemic change come so, on come on sis come on that's what i'm talking about Hey, not, not this, like a, um, right there exactly and so it, with this book like i said it's not just about pissing off white people and rubbing in their faces how they treated us and how they still are treating us it's more than that but those that are mature enough that, to make it through historical political and precedent paradigms into hypothetical they will see i'm not just talking about you know how they treated us and how they're treating us i'm talking about us you know fixing the issue and coming together as one and having forgiveness for one you know, a lot of people don't believe this about it, but we actually, I know I do, you know, it wasn't done specifically. I forgive them for how they treated my people in the past. For one, that's because, you know, that's what God says to do. You know, you can't be a believer in Christ and not try or at least attempt to abide by his word and love thy neighbor and forgive as you want to be forgiven. So that's why I forgive. However, we don't forget, and especially if you can't take a, a accountability or acknowledgement. And so... And that's my whole thing right there. That pool, we talk about it coming together, having, you know, these conversations, taking accountability, coming up with ways to combat, you know, systemic racism. And I don't just talk about blacks and white. I also pay homage to, you know, Native Americans, Latinos, Asian, Muslim, even the LGBTQ community are included in my book as well. So this is not just, again, about black and white. So come and learn is what I say. Uh, with that, with this book again, it's available on my website, differentwell.net. Uh, you guys go and get your copy. I often uh, do promotions on my YouTube channel, which you guys definitely hit that subscribe button and go to yes, it. Absolutely, YouTube. all that information will be provided in the details. Um, you know, hey, listen, let me tell you, when it comes to um, people being in their feelings about stuff, that's something mm -hmm. that we can control. Um, yeah. you know, there was a purpose and a mission for you to put this book out. So the book is not for everybody because everybody's not going to comprehend. Everybody's not going to understand and mm -hmm. not for us to worry about, you know, yep. because for the 10 people that might be upset that you put it out there, there's going to be three that is going to buy it and is going to love it. It is going to help them. It is going to change their perspective. It is going to have them look. And those are the ones that mm -hmm. we, you know, yep. um, because again, hey, everybody don't particularly partake on how I speak and what I talk about. But at the end of the day, I name my podcast Empowering Real Talk for a reason. I'm not finna sugarcoat it and I'm not finna, I, I, I am considerate of feelings, but yeah. I'm not gonna suppress myself because of your feelings, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You know, <laughs> hey, you don't like it, keep scrolling, <laughs> don't listen, don't click. It is what it is. Okay. Um, just like with your book, you don't like it, you don't like what it's talking about, don't purchase the book, but there are going to be some that are, you know, um, like me, because I ain't going to be Coach K, what I learned about, you know, from, from 45, one thing, only thing I've learned from him is, you know, four years of him being in the office, you know, after all that work as he caused and even afterwards, you know, this man still had, you know, at least 25% of the U.S. adult population still riding for him, so, and that's over 75 million people. So that right there resonates to me, no matter who you are, what you are about, what you're selling to the public, it's going to be somebody out there that's going to buy it. So Absolutely. you go to celebrate it and not really talk about it. There you go. And as long as we keep applying the logic, we'll stay straight. Sure we and I even did a, you know, a target market survey to see where my audience would be. And we, we can tell you, I can tell you, you know, with my people's. Um, as funny as it is, um, I've actually, you know, seen some white people are white people have read the book and have agreed with what I'm saying and been on you know, podcast interviews with white people who agree with what I'm saying. And so, mm -hmm. not all white people out there are racist. Oh, absolutely, I don't believe that either. Uh -huh. People that are racist out there, they need to be put on spot, and this is for them, you know, to put it in their faces, whether they like it or not. Yeah, like uh, you said, it's about change. Trouble's already been here, and as far as, you know, me being afraid for any, you know, blowback, God prepared me a long time ago. He, this is why he had this, why he sent me through with what I went through to prepare me for what's about to come. And so, um, like I said, go where you celebrate it and not where you tolerate it. And with Third Eye Entertainment LLC, you know, our motto is manifest, plan, prepare. And what that means is for those who feel they are destined for greatness in life, they have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it. First, when you manifest, you have to remove all that negative thinking, the doubt, the fear, 
you know, the backsliding and you have to replace it with, you know, uh, words of affirmation, you know, speaking it into existence like no other. And then once you move on to the prep planning part, you write it out on paper and you start, you know, coming up with a plan of action, how you're going to achieve these goals and these plans and having exit strategies and second backup plans. You know, you can't plan for the unknown, but you can expect that it's coming. And knowing whenever, whenever it comes, you will be able to handle it like a boss and you will get through it. It's tough mm-hmm. times. Y'all know I talk about that all the time. Y'all hear me say that all the time. I don't mean to interrupt you, baby, but they, my listeners know I say that all the time. Prepare for the obstacles. There are mm-hmm. going to be some. There are going to be, you know, things that are going to try to deter and distract. But as long as you prepare, mm-hmm. you are good. You know, because it's not going to stop it. We can't control the outside habits of these people. If people, places, and things, we can't control those. We can only control how we react to them. So if you yeah. sit up here and hit a brick wall and allow that brick wall to completely stop you permanently, then that is your fault. That is you. Exactly. You have to assume that exactly. account. Exactly. Exactly. You know, so if you hit that wall and you're like, okay, I got to go ahead and go around it, it might take me a little bit longer, but it's okay. Be okay with changes. Be okay with transitioning. Be okay with modifications. Exactly. But, but, but as far as the preparation goes, when I say preparation is deeper than, you know, on the outside, it's from the okay. inside. When I say preparation, it means preparing as far as going to get your house in order. That means going to get your mental house in order. It means uh-huh. go fix Whatever is plaguing you and holding you back from your past, go fix that. Go fix your financial house. If you need to go get your health in order and get back in that gym and get fine again, go do that. Go fix your financial house. Go fix your relationship house. Go cut those people off who mean you know well or go mend those broken bridges that you know you're supposed to. So that way, whatever whatever you're manifesting and planning for, when it comes to you, you can be prepared for it. You will know how to handle it and won't squander it like I did in my past. I had so many business opportunities that came my way. So many doors opened up for me, but I just didn't believe that I deserved it. For me, it was that I had that that concept of coming up that it was too good to be true. So when I was even in foster homes, I was placed in really good foster homes. But for me, coming from, you know, the streets, it, for me, it was just too good to be true. And so I sabotaged it. I decided, you know, I'm the captain of the ship. I'm going to decide when it's time for the ship to go down. And so coming from that mindset, like I said, it plagued me throughout my adulthood and everything. And so when it comes to, you know, realizing what, what, what you meant for, you have to be all in all in about it and knowing that, you know, if you don't go for it, you have nobody to blame but yourself. I said it previously, what you went through as a child, it wasn't your fault. It was out of your control. But as an adult, if it's still plaguing you, you can't sleep at night, then it's on you to go and fix. Even as an adult, somebody hurt you in the past, don't expect for them to come back and mend that broken bridge. They've moved on to their next victim. So it's on you to go back and, and, and fix whatever they broke and have peace about it and move on and take back your power and free yourself from whatever mental bondage that you're in. Um, especially in the, in the black community, uh, I, I realize a lot of our mental issues it stems from, you know, the, the, the racial hardship we've been faced with over the decades, as well as, you know, our own mental anguish and psychological we've been faced with in our own, within our own communities. But once we, I, I said this at another podcast to ask me, what can we as black people do to 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 help us come up? Because it's obviously, you know, the white man ain't gonna do nothing about it. He wants to keep it. And, and never will. And so the first thing that we must do is get our mental health in check, be big enough to say black yeah. people need to do some therapy. We mm-hmm. need to go fix these psychological issues. Not some, but all of these psychological yeah. issues that we have. Once we, you know, do that and, and get ahead on that. Uh, then we can start working on things as a collective, as a group, as to why we tear one another down, why we do the things we do to one another, especially with colorism. I think that's the, one of the biggest issues we have in the Black community is, you know, that light skin, dark skin mentality. And so once we get we tackle those type of issues or address those issues, it doesn't happen, the change doesn't happen overnight, but once we finally address those issues and constantly work towards it, that's when we as a black community, in my opinion, can start to to be not even rebuild because we never had it, if you will, but start to build that foundation. 
start to be a professional. Well, we had it in the past, you know, with with yeah. uh, Oklahoma in the Black Wall Street, and they destroyed it. But knowing what we know now and how much resources and knowledge that we have acquired over the decades, why not start? And so I, I also stated that it's going to take for all the people, all the black people that have platforms and, you know, the funds to do so to help put back money into the community to do so. You know, that's what it's going to take. Um, is, but the main thing is getting our mental health in order and then check and take it back our power. We, can't expect, we already know, you know, what these people in Congress and white, I don't want to say white folks, but what the people, you know, in Congress got plans, for, which ain't nothing. It's just to let us sit back and destroy ourselves. And so it's, it's on us to take back our power. And even if it's just a small amount of us, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll see it, you know, whether they want to or not. One thing I can say about this generation that I'm proud to see it's a lot, I'm seeing a lot of more, you know, black ambitious people out there going for their, starting their own business. It's going back to school, you know, re-educating themselves and bettering themselves. So I, I know change is coming for us. We just have to keep working at it and, and keep growing on it and never letting them stop us, hold us back. And even when they try to, that's when we go much harder. They, that saying, somebody say, when you don't want to pray, that's when you need to pray because the devil trying to stop you or the evil forces coming against you. So when it's things, a situation of that nature, that's when it's time for us to go harder, if you will. All right and, now, sis, I love it. I love it. You said a mouthful, especially when it comes to our mental health. People, mm -hmm. we need to talk to people. We need to talk to people. You need to talk to either a therapist that is going to help you embrace the traumas of the past. You could speak to a coach with regards to if you have reached that point in therapy and you, you know, you're stuck now and trying to move forward. That is mm -hmm. where it comes in to help you, you know, follow through with goals and become accountable and keep yourself consistent with mm -hmm. so many things, you know, but you you said it all like hey she real life hosted the podcast today y'all because i'm telling you everything <laughs> she speaks and everything she said is fact it's like we have to become more mindful and mm -hmm. i am not taking away from the racism and you know the system you know systemic ugh, and word, and you know, i'm not taking away from any of that but the problem is we now have to understand that they're not going to change they don't want to change because they're not in a position that they have to change. So they're not they, going to change. We've got to take the emotion. They, out they of mean they're, they're no longer in power. Yeah, so. they, they, we have to take the emotion out of it and we have to apply the logic so we can come up with strategies to put ourselves in those positions uh -huh. to where they're not going to be able to take them from us. So that involves relearning unlearning situations and conditions, unlearning ways of, that you've been used to all your life as an individual that no longer suit you. Coming into the new ways, you know, it's super important that we have to understand that we have to grow us. We can't wait on nobody to grow us because that's why we so far behind now, waiting on everybody else to do it for us. Yeah. Yeah, so. You're right, sis, you're right. And so with my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, that's the book that'll do it for us. And unfortunately, when you have to, we have to have this another protest with, for the death of the unarmed, you know, victim. Uh, I want them to take this, you know, the pictures of these illustrations of mine and, and hold them up and show the world, yeah. you know, what if this was you, you know, or your people? What if this happened to them? You know, and if the question is, if, if you're uncomfortable with seeing, you know, a white man, you know, being shrunk up by a, a angry black mob. But then here you are, you know, having these pictures that you'll know, have black men being lynched by any mob, and your attitude and excuse about it is, oh, it's the past, it happened, there's nothing that can be done. But then you're upset when you see a white person, then why is it okay or why is it not okay right. for you know, it to happen to a white person, not a black? That's yeah. also, you know, a reason why I wrote the book is because I was tired of, you know, hearing those excuses, oh, I don't see racism, or it's only if it's alive, it's because you guys are keeping it there. Yeah, but that's, but that's the thing, They're, they don't see it because they've never had to experience it. Mm -hmm. We want them to experience something that they have never experienced, so they're never going to get the feeling that we get, you know, and that's the problem. We we want to shove something down, down that they aren't never going to be able to grasp because they've never experienced it. They can see it all day, but their partake on what's happening is not the same as ours, you know, so 
it's important, you know, that we understand that, y'all, that we have to make the changes within us. You know, once we become the power and the force, then we are going to force them to have to do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yes, yeah, sis, look, I know it has been amazing. You know, we could go for hours and hours on this. But, <laughs> but I, I, um, the same for our next session, yeah? <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, yes, um, let them know where you are at on Facebook, Instagram, on social media. Where can you find you? Definitely, I would love for you guys to go to my uh, website, differentworld.net, spelled D I F E R N T S W O R L D.net. Uh, there you'll have, I have all of my uh, social media handles, my Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter page, as well as my YouTube channel, which I definitely would love for you guys to like, share, comment, and subscribe to. It has all of my uh, adventurous travels of me traveling all over the world, uh, my social awareness blogs. I talk about, you know, issues that are often swept under the rug. Um, what else? Again, my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is available on my website now as well as for those who are here listening and would like me to be a part of any grassroots conversation, I do do motivational speaking. So go to my website again, differentworld.net, and you can book your girl. I'm free of charge as of now. Yeah, I know <laughs> so, that's right. Hey, as of now, that's right. Claim is this. Claim it. Thank you, Queen, for having me on your show, the you know, Empowering Real Talk podcast. And just remind you, you're a queen. you got a crown on your head, and you're rocking it oh so well. And thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for everybody out there listening. Again, remember, whatever it is in life that you have gone through, it is okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Again, the crisis number is 1-800-273-8255. You can also do your own research and homework online and find what works best for you when it comes to keeping your own mental health in check. Um, I also, lastly, you know, just want to say for those out there who are feeling they are destined for greatness in life, you have to remember, manifest plan and prepare for it and then it will surely come to you guys difference well come and learn you know i talk about that is dope y'all thank y'all so much for tuning in y'all make sure to subscribe all to her and y'all know where i'm at at coach k woods on all social media platforms and y'all know y'all better subscribe to the youtube channel too baby if i talk y'all i appreciate y'all tuning in y'all have a good one until next time stay positive baby all right, everybody, welcome back. I hope you all enjoyed listening to my audio interview I did with the lovely Keisha Woods of the Empowering Real Talk Power Cat Podcast. Be sure to like her or check her out on Anchor, uh, available on Spotify. Uh, she's a dope podcaster. I enjoyed being on her show, as well as her information is in my description for, below. So be sure to give us some clout and check her out, you guys. I want to always make sure I'm uplifting the queens and making sure, you know, I help where I can. You know, it's not just about me, you know, bettering me. I, I, the best way to receive good karma is to help others and put good karma out into the world and you receive it. And so, in such, you know, me sharing her information, you guys, somebody out there that's seeing me, gonna go check her out. So, be sure, again, big shout out to uh, Kay Woods for having me. Um, make sure to let her know that she's a queen and she has a crown on her head and she's rocking it oh so well so make sure you guys check her out and definitely uh, don't forget to comment and like and share and subscribe uh, to my youtube channel as well while i got you uh, here um what else we got going on in different world right now you guys yeah a lot going on you guys we got so many content um coming up i have uh, tomorrow which is thursday we got the social excuse me, not the social awareness the uh, pop culture so i'll be doing my first movie review job i uh, did the woman king i went and saw it twice man it was bad so i can't wait to share that with you guys so be on the lookout for that. That's coming up tomorrow. And then Friday, you know, we got our travel vlogs. I'm dropping uh, finally my a trip to Greece. Uh, I'm so excited because I had so much going on with that and so many details I wanted to share with you guys. And little video clips and FYI, full disclosure, I had to get some of my videos from my old Instagram account. And so it's a little janky, but it's still my shit. So hey, <laughs> enjoy. So be on the lookout for that, you guys, as well as don't forget, uh, as far as my other social media handles besides YouTube, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as my own website and wherein you can get my book. Here it is. Dun, 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 dun. What if a controversial paradigm shift? Again, it's a book written to inform and encourage thought provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So please be advised this is intended 
for a mature audience only. And uh, so if you can't take this heat, then do not bother coming into this kitchen. But if so, head on over to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy, you guys, today. Uh, it's available. As well as on my website, you can book me for any type of motivational speaking event or any grassroots conversations that you would like for me to be a part of. You'll just go to my booking page and you'll uh, submit the request. As well as, guys, be mindful that as of now, I'm free of charge, but <laughs> uh, who knows, man, six months, a year from now, from now, I'll be speaking in front of, you know, thousands and millions of people. And so, uh, book me while you can, you guys, because in the near future, it's not going to be this way for me. Trust me. Um, so, with that being said, thank you guys so much for all your love and support on that. I truly appreciate it. all you guys' uh, interacting with me. Uh, and again, like I said, it's not just a one way street with me and Difference World and Third Eye ENT. You interact with us, we interact with you. And so, I do appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing me, not just with on my YouTube channel, but you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, so many uh, other social media platforms out there that people are reaching out to me on. And so that let that be a motivation for anybody out there who's just getting started with their YouTube channel and, and feel like, you know, they don't have enough followers or they're not doing enough. Man, listen to me. You are right where you need to be. And everything will happen in due season. And at the right time, at the right place, you're going to take off. I mean, I promise you, God will take you from the back and place you up front when you have faith and believe in his will and his plan and put in the work as well. And, and don't give up too easily and and then that's how you will see that good things will come to you okay so with that being said let's do it real quick a mental health check for anybody out there that may need it including myself making sure that you guys are doing whatever it is that you have to to make sure uh, you don't go off the deep end as well as taking anybody with you for anybody that is feeling you know suicidal dealing with deep dark depression uh, anxiety, uh, any type of mental anguish, being bullying, you know, hey, uh, bipolarism, you know, shit, people that's on drugs or going through recovery, having relapse, anything, anything, any type of mental anguish, just know that it is okay to not be okay, but never sit there and not be okay, man. Go get help. Go do whatever it is that you have to do, like I said, to free yourself from that mental bondage. So that way you don't go off the deep end or possibly take anybody with you. If you are know anybody that needs these resources, please share them with them. It may very well save your life or somebody else's. So, with that being said, the crisis number is 1-800, excuse me, yeah, 1-800, <clears throat> oh, I'm having a little fart moment right here. Oh, yeah. So, the crisis hotline number, for those who need it, is 1-800-273-8255. For those who prefer to text or you can call this number 988 or you can text 741741. For those who prefer to go online, you can go to mentalhealthishealth.us. And for those who are outside of the U.S., you can go to incounseling.com. Again, that is spelled E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. And remember, you guys, it is okay to not be okay, but never sit there and not be okay. That's not okay. All right. And so with that being said, to close out of this vlog, thank you guys again for all your love and support. Again, don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and then you share. And of course, leave a comment and interact with me, guys. I do appreciate it. As well as uh, be on the lookout. I got some other things coming up. Uh, tomorrow, like I said, I have uh, my uh, pop culture content dropping. So be on the lookout for my first movie review, guys. I'm very excited about that. Um, as well as just keep rocking with your girl. Keep coming to Difference World and come and learn about me and what's going on and what I'm about, what I'm putting out into the universe. And so I do appreciate that, you guys, as well as make sure you guys are on y'all grind and doing whatever it is that y'all have to do. Again, remember, you either like come up playing like Cardi B or that come back like Robert D. There is no more in between. Between, okay and so with that being said whatever it is in life that you feel in that you are destined for and you believe that it's meant for you you have to manifest plan and prepare for it and then it will surely come to you difference world come and learn everybody come and learn <laughs>
What if they kidnap millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author different. Go to differenceworld.net.